Hello. Hey. I'm so excited to be a part of this. Uh, You're the first one. I know it's just like um, I don't know. I, I feel like a pioneer. It's you something. are a pioneer. This is Rennell Whitaker. So Rennell teaches. Well, are you still teaching high school? So I'm actually an instructional coach right now at high in a high school. Um, when teachers need any kind of assistance with like pedagogical things, they need to maybe incorporate new strategies. My job is to help support that. So that's kind of my deal. My focus is primarily in technology. You know, in our school, we kind of feel like no one should be segmented like that. So everyone is instructional. It's all about support and instruction. Okay, so now what's three things I especially don't know about you? One, uh, I cannot snap my fingers. It's a thing that I am not able to do. Okay. Um, two, another thing you don't know about me. Oh, one of my favorite teachers in uh, college was actually Kanye West's mom. Really? Yes. Yeah, wow. She was Dr. Donda West was amazing. Uh, her and um, another one of my professors, Kathleen McInerney. If she sees us, that would be really cool. Uh, <laughs> two like really influential people mm. on me. Uh, and a third thing is, oh, a third thing is um, one of my many hobbies is I uh, like make music. I can play three different instruments. So I did not know that. Just okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay at three different instruments. Which so, instruments? Uh, piano, drums. And the recorder. I count that as an instrument. That counts. Don't (laughs) underestimate the recorder. That's an awesome portable instrument. We want to thank you for being our first guest. We are really motivated to explore the issue of acceptance. We are not experts. We are not gurus. And we have a theory to start out with that play has a role Hmm. in building acceptance between people. Helping people choose acceptance more often in their daily lives. Well, yeah, I mean, play is an equalizer, right? It's one of those things where, depending on any, you know, sport, game, activity, it's one of those things where, you know, cooperation is key. So in order to cooperate with people, you have to kind of accept them on a base level. It's like, you know what, we're we're equals on this playing field. Wherever you are, you can play with others and bond that way. And embracing playing and being playful, which we believe transcends age. It's not just for children, so... That's what we're exploring with the five questions we're about to ask you. Yes, and I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to it. We have, uh, hand over, five teacups from my Goodwill teacup collection. Can you see them right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, see them. Countdown. In each of these teacups are one of the questions okay. with something delicious that we have on some authority that you like, which is chocolate pudding. Yes, I love chocolate pudding. We're sorry you're not here to slurp it down. Yeah, yeah I, I wish you, I would. <laughs> you, you're going to pick? One of the teacups at each at a time, and okay. then you're going to let me fish the question out of the pudding. Oh, wow. method of your choosing, we have <laughs> yellow teacup. Okay. We have red teacup. We have purple flower teacup. I like that one. We have blue flower teacup. Okay. And we have uh, pink flower teacup. And Christina has three ways. That okay. you can fish out the question, and each time you get to tell her which way to fish it out. Okay. Oh, I wish I was there now. It would have been really cool to fish them out. <laughs> so this is you got you got the power to make this really yeah, very you, strange for me. We have dignified, <laughs> which is chopsticks. Okay. Um, and used in my dominant or not dominant hand, and uh, we have uh, disaster, which is I put this in my mouth and try to get the question out, hopefully without covering my computer in oh, the pudding. No. Oh, no. And, and then we have delicious where I have to get the question out, but I can't use my hands. I have to put my face in the teacup. Well, okay. Yeah. So okay. just just for your viewers' benefit, uh, I'm going to start out nicely. So let's go with the red cup and dignify. Okay. So you're going to hold I'm this. I'm going to hold it. Uh, would you like <laughs> me to put it in my dominant or my non-dominant hand? Let's go dominant. Let's okay. let's oh, let's, let's start lovely. out nice. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get this out. Now, this is going to be very dignified. Yeah. Oh. Yay. Unwrap it. Uh, All right. Think about the last time you played. In whatever <laughs> capacity or definition you choose, what did you get out of it? How did playing affect you? Oh, this is actually a really easy one. So um, in my new role, part of what I have to do is, you know, train teachers on how to do certain strategies. And um, one that's become really popular recently is the whole idea of a breakout uh, or an escape room. So recently, um, me and a couple of my counterparts were 
tasked with creating a uh, escape room for our administrative team, our principals, deans, all that kind of stuff. And that was probably the most fun I've had with professional development in my life because, you know, we had a bunch of different um, maps and things that we used invisible markers on. And uh, we used, we found old um, yearbooks with our superintendent's pictures in it. And they, they had to like find his picture on the right page number. And it was just cool to kind of watch our administration in a play mode versus a, you know, sit down and, and talk mode. And, you know, even when groups decided to cheat, uh, they decided together. You know, and it was, <laughs> you know, it was one of those things where I was able to kind of go, you know what, no matter what, this, this was a success because everyone worked together. No one was, you know, a principal over the deans. It was like we're all on the same team. And it was it was really cool to kind of get to do that. And did life. you did you see a real difference to some extent in how people acted with each other because the hierarchy was gone? What it came down to was talent. Like it came down to who knew how to figure something out. Everyone's voice was valid. So we had principals who were assertive, but at the end of the day, if they didn't have those math skills or those um, spatial skills, they had to kind of defer to people and work together. And I think that's that was the most impressive part about it. Cool. That's an, an awesome example of play at the adult level. I'm going to go with blue flowers. flowers. And what's the method? Let's go dignified non dominant. Ooh, he's working. He's got a method. It's scientific. Okay, so let's see. Am I trying to hold this? Because I got pudding. No, you just stay over there with your sticky stuff. (laughs) Okay. Okay, this is. It's happening, though. Can I? Yeah, take that. All right. Ronell, is it weird if I lick this? No, I I think that's actually. Do it on camera. We have to see it happen. That, that, that's really, a little weird. <laughs> I told her she couldn't do that. Do you play? If yes, how? You, Rennell, specifically. If yes, how? If no, why not? I don't know if this like fully goes with what you all are thinking, but I play a lot of games on my phone now. So uh, not all of them are good. Some are like just weird. Like, I just got one this morning. Ooh. And no, don't do that. It's an idle flipper, actually. Don't do that. No, no, don't. Because I even when I was playing it today, I was like, "What am I? What am I doing?" I just <laughs> flip random knives until they land on the on the wood face down, like a blade in or whatever. It's a physics uh, um, simulator. You just flip a knife as many times as you can to get it to land. Yeah. Blade down. Each knife or blade presents its own physics problem. So, like, I worked myself up to the chopsticks. So you have to get those to land in there. Would you agree, perhaps, that once you come out of playing it, you may just be in a more open space? So if something came up where you might react, you might respond instead because you're in a more oh. mellower place? Is that yes, possible? I have, I have a great example of this. So I got the Chicago Architecture uh, Lego kit. And I built that entire thing when I was at work. Wow. And it was so gratifying. That when I was like done with it, and I was able to kind of like refocus on my work. So recently, I had like a lot of stuff happening at work. I was a lot of craziness. Uh, my my role has kind of increased recently, and I put I bought the London one and the Eiffel Tower to kind of like recenter myself. I would just play those, like build that Eiffel Tower and that Lego. And it was nice to kind of focus my, my thoughts so that when I was done with it, it's kind of like you said, I was able to kind of rejoin the world and kind of um, have a different perspective now because that had given me time to kind of kind of shrink the world a little bit before it got big again. So we've got yeah. pink, purple, and yellow. You know what? I'm going to go with purple. Okay. <laughs> Yay. You know what? I'm going to invent one for you. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. For alliteration. And this is going to be the dainty method. You have to use your two pinky fingers to get it out. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay. I have some of those. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this is, I'm going to get to taste the pudding finally. But I'll do it off camera. Oh, God. All right. Do you have to agree with or understand the people with whom you engage in play? And we are defining play as any immersive activity that frees you from constraints of daily life. I thought about this question, and I actually had some issues with it, mainly because I have to figure out, did you mean, like, agree with them, like, as a person, or agree with the way that they inhabit the game? Growing up, I used to play Monopoly with my family. I never agreed with how people played that game. It was 
a game that, for the most part, I mean, you would think we hated playing because no, no one was happy, and we never finished the game. Mm-hmm. But we always played it. That's kind of part of the experience, right? It's like it's baked into that game. Yeah, no, you don't have to agree with people um, to, to, to actually enjoy play. The other part, though, is when you think about like professional sports when you have people who are competitive with, with their teammates. Um, they have a common goal that they have to accomplish. And it's still, um, you know, it's possible to not be with who, who someone is and still um, search, you know, strive towards that goal. Their end goal is more important than, you know, how they feel about personal issues or even in my other example, like how they play the game. Mm-hmm. So we have pink and yellow. Yep. Yep. So what what are my, my two retrieval options? We, we have disaster. Disaster, okay. Um, so, um, and this would be an, uh-huh. well, got it, I'll got block it, got the cup. It. She's going to protect I'll, I'll block the cup. And then okay. there's um, uh, delicious, but possibly also disastrous, with I'm not allowed to use my hands. I just put face in cup. I'm going to stay with my trajectory here. Okay. I'm going to go with the pink cup. Okay. And disaster. <laughs> All right, I'm going to block the cup here. It's very heavy. <laughs> Put it on. I don't, I don't envy you having to, to edit this. So. Oh, that, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> back, back to dignity. I, God, I, I wish fine. you were here. This is so fun. Okay, do you think there is a connection? between being able to play and being able to accept other people, ideas, or beliefs? It's kind of the tragedy of getting older in a lot of ways because as kids, um, how we teach people to socialize is through play. And again, like we kind of said earlier in the show, it's, um, it's natural to kind of say, all right, yeah, we don't, we don't really care about who you are when we're playing together. Um, even when people have physical limitations, it's one of those things where you find a way to overcome that kind of stuff. As we get older, though, it's no coincidence that we play less and we don't get along very well either. There's the other side of it, too. People who do play or who do who are creative kind of have the opportunity to build community around like their love of, of play, their love of creativity, and it can be a positive force. It's just sometimes, as adults, we let other forces kind of overwhelm that. So when you look at things like fandom, where we take our play a little bit too seriously, um, it can become toxic, you know, depending on who is who is dominant in that conversation. So it's 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 kind of a sad thing. Like we 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 remove the play part of play and the fun part of it, and it becomes serious, like everything else we do in our lives. If you take part in in a community that is is sharing those kind of ideas and sharing playful concepts it's kind of important to remind yourself you know why you fell in love with it in the first place and kind of take a a macro view of it because people get so bogged down with like the micro stuff and the small stuff that it's hard to kind of see the forest for the trees you no know, lack of a better than that analogy a friend of mine adon we, we argue a lot about like uh like comic nerd stuff and sometimes he gets like fake mad at me because at the end of the day i pretty much like most things I, I mean, I'm alive at a point where I get to see a Superman movie. So why do I care if it's not as good as it could be? I still have to see it. It happened. So I, I, I think sometimes it's easier to just just step back and go, all right, let's just be happy this thing is happening. That's part of why acceptance is, 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 is a thing that, that's huge for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think, Andy, you and I started this conversation a long time ago. We talked mm-hmm. about um, the idea of tolerance. Because... You know, to say that, that you tolerate someone, it's just saying that you are, you acknowledge their existence, but you don't have to be okay with it. And I, I think that that's, um, that's a really myopic way of approaching things. It's really short-sighted, especially when you think about, you know, no human being deserves to just be tolerated. That's almost insulting. So when someone's existence is accepted, and it's it's acknowledged to be a true thing that we can say, oh, well, yeah, this is, this is just how life is. It's another facet of life. Mm-hmm. Then it it dignifies that person. And it gives them an opportunity to access humanity in a different way. One last cup, right? Yellow cup. <laughs> and and we, we know what the last method is. <laughs> I, just, I, just know, I just know what's going to happen now. Oh, I'm it's on my that. chin. It's on I'm my re- chin. <laughs> 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 
She might not be able to do the this. The pudding one. is holding it in. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right. Oh, God. It is right, good pudding. <laughs> if you were trapped on a tropical island with a limitless supply of water and your favorite food, maybe chocolate pudding, we don't know, but were allowed only one belonging and it had to be a toy, what toy would you choose? I would bring a toy inflatable raft oh. <laughs> that could support my weight and some water and food. That's what I would bring. Look at you. <laughs> Practical. If I wanted to go symbolic, my wife is reminding me, uh, I have a favorite Funko Pop, actually. Like like a little figurine. Collectible. Yeah. And it would be, I, I, it's actually at work because it's, it's a nice, like, focus point. It's, uh, it's a little mini Black Panther the Whose movie is coming out this week? Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know when this is being released, but I'm super excited about that. Um, so yeah, and I, I take him everywhere I go when I travel places. Uh, but again, if I'm on a desert island with that, I don't, I don't want to go Tom Hanks and <laughs> start you know, talking to him. And yeah, stuff. start talking to him. <laughs> we have learned so much from you today, and yes. we are so grateful to you, not only for your thoughtful and fun answers, but for playing along with our. <laughs> Our unconventional methods. Thank you so much, Renell. All right, thank you. Y'all have a good night. You too. Bye.